All right, all right, boy Trigger Man, back in the lab. And today, what we have here. Okay, uh, I get a message from quite a few guys um, asking me, how do I get such clean jobs and such an old, outdated, big dinosaur of a spray booth? And um, truth of the matter, I don't get exceptionally clean jobs, you know. I, just like every other painter, I get dirt in my paint jobs. So, what it is, I'll show you guys a few of the things that I do to get ready for a paint job. You know, every job that gets ready to come in, show a few steps I take, you know, I blow it out. I got me one of these here high power uh, blow blowers that I rigged up. So some piping, I put a fit on it and then I squeeze the tip of it there. Uh, and this, th this sucker blows, this sucker is hard, hard. And I go from one end to the other, then I come out front here and I blow a little more. Again, if you have a cross draft spray booth, so basically everything out here is gonna be coming into your booth and out of the exhaust there. So, you know, I blow from the booth all the way to the outside, all the cracks, everything, and I wet it down. So I'm just gonna give a run through and show you guys what I do to prepare for a clean job. So stay tuned. Okay, and these are just a few of the things that I've learned along the way in painting inside of this booth. Uh, prior to me coming to this shop, I had never sprayed in anything like this. You know, I've seen them around, different friends of mine had worked in them, but I had actually never sprayed inside of one of these booths. Even the whole turning the car to one direction, like if your exhaust is coming towards the back of the spray booth, you know, you, a certain way you have to position the car. If you're doing the rear bumper, you know, and only the rear bumper, you would back the car in to where the rear bumper is facing the rear of the booth. I mean, these are things that I had no knowledge of because I only sprayed in down draft spray booth. So that made me think, you know, there may be some of you guys out there that go through the same thing or similar. So a lot of this stuff, you know, I kind of picked up on my own trial and error on what works inside of this booth. I mean, I've also painted in my garage at home. I used to have a warehouse, me and a buddy of mine, body man. We used to rent a warehouse and do work out of there. So I painted in some spots that wasn't really ideal paint environments. And um, I've learned a few things along the way that um, I'll share with you guys. And as you saw, first off, you want to blow. You want to blow everything. If you have boxes in the area, you know, crates, whatever you have in your garage, blow it. You know, all the sides around the lights, you know, each one of these lights in that booth, you know, I go with my blow gun, blow on top of it, around it, just blow. There is no time limit on how long you should blow. And actually, once you think you got it all blown out and you're ready to wet it down, blow it some more. Go in and you blow it. Up top, your roof, whether it's drywall, whatever you have up on the roof, blow it. Blow it good. Then you come in, you want to wet everything down, you know. And be careful not to wet up electrical, you know, electrical connections, outlets, you know, anything you got going on there your plugs you know keep all that stuff away from the water and i know a lot of this sounds like common sense but you'd be surprised somebody get trigger happy with the water hose spraying down the damn air compressor all electrical connections <laughs> next thing you're going to spray and you got sparks everything arcing like yeah it sounds like common sense but it's really not so common make sure all your masking is tight nothing getting in nothing getting out every little cracking crevice make sure you tape it even if it don't look cute today we have a toyota corolla uh quick small job a brand new door door shell it's not a door skin this is a whole brand new door shell uh, we cut it in already had some damage on the quarter panel so a small blend there also had some damage on the front door so 
Yeah, a little, good amount of room to blend, good amount of room. Um, got a color that's pretty close, so the color I picked out is actually can be panel painted, it's so close, so should be no problem with blend room. We're going to hit it with some wet bed, and that's what we're gonna do, man, make it work. Uh, show you guys a few things in this video, what I do to get jobs to come out fairly clean when spraying in a big old dinosaur. You know, this is all old cross draft. Yeah, so not ideally, you know, the perfect spaceship, you know, like spray booth down draft with all the touch screen buttons and fanciness. So it is a spray booth here, but it's just about as good as your carport or your garage. You know what I'm saying? Old, old system here sucking up, you know, sucking up out of here. You know, she's an old one, she's an old one. But we still get some clean jobs out of here, man. We still get some clean jobs. A lot of you guys be asking me like how you get them so clean, spraying in that booth. So we're gonna show you some tips today. We're gonna give you some tips. So right now I'm gonna go mask up, mix up, and we're gonna get to it. All right, all right. And you always, of course, wanna give a tack. Nice clean tack cloth. Hit all your panels. Even hit your plastic around the tape edges everywhere where there may be a little piece of dirt sticking you want to make sure you tack it all inside those door handle areas everywhere so i'll come along the plastic there little tack surrounding areas and on this job we're going to go with a dark gray sealer keep in mind on jobs that you don't have to put sealer you know, try not to. You know, when you're spraying your 2K primer, put a good amount of primer on vehicles so that once you block it down and you do all your final sanding, you're still on top of that 2K primer. Once you go through it and you have all these burn throughs and everything, then it's best you seal it. So, you know, putting sealer down will contribute to more dirt in a paint job. So that's something to always keep in mind but don't ever not seal for the sake of having less dirt if the vehicle needs to be sealed. Okay, and we're going here with the base coat using the Segola 3300. I've really been digging this gun lately for metallic jobs. Don't ask me why, but yeah, I'm on metallics with this air cap. Even though I think this air cap was supposed to be more for clear. But I don't know. So far with every metallic job I've sprayed with it, it's actually enjoyable. So any of you guys that have the Segola 3300, let me know your experience with the um, with metallics on that gun. You know, sometimes you use a spray gun and it just kind of just kind of flows in one direction, you know. I mean, it's great with clear as well, but I don't know, with the metallics. I'm digging it, I'm digging it. Using the Segola disposable paint cup system here, as you see, really digging that as well. Now I'm going with a little wet bed. Told you guys I was gonna use a wet bed. I actually forgot to put it down first, but with that stuff, man, it really don't even matter. You know, you can put your wet bed before you do your final blend, it doesn't really matter. It does not matter at all. Some people like to put the wet bed down after the sealer to kill the sealer edge. That's nothing that I've ever felt the need to do. Going with 20 PSI, doing my blend. Yeah, that whole kill the sealer edge with wet bed, I mean, that's something I never really felt the need to do. I see a lot of that from these uh, TikTokers. <laughs> you know, the TikTokers add a whole new element to painting. So, <laughs> gotta keep up with the trends, man. <laughs> Y'all know Trigger Man old school. We can't keep up with them TikTok trends. Ain't that right, Mr. TikToker? <laughs> Got another tack, final tack. I'm going with my clear. Clear using the Big Brother 4600 Extreme. 
titanium cap this is a 1.2 XL sometimes I'm in the mood to walk two panels sometimes I'm not man you know all of that stuff you know it doesn't really matter man it's whatever you're comfortable with some of you guys ask you know the benefit of walking panels or walking the whole side and whatever you feel like man if you don't have enough steps in for the day you know you're trying to get 10,000 steps sure why not go ahead and walk but it really doesn't matter it's not that serious you know time I just go in there and just freestyle stuff man whatever you're comfortable with you get a good result good outcome do that check it check make sure your first coat is tacked off make sure it's tacked off good that will help with 28 2 and 4 and 4 is 8 so 28 28 psi that will help as well with covering little small pieces of dirt you know you have little pieces of micro dirt nibs in there i mean real small ones but when you let that first coat flash off long enough and you go to put your second coat on then you have more of a chance to bury it as well as not getting a run but more so in this case for this video it'll cover those little small micro pieces of dirt then that's why some people even go with a third coat you know I know a guy a friend of mine Andy he um he's a painter has his own shop and every job he does is three or four coats a clear like every job and that's because he doesn't like the buff he doesn't want a buff you know he owns the place he has to do all the buffing himself but every job a minimum of three coats most jobs he'll do four coats and that's to cover up dirt you know to bury the dirt the most dirt you're gonna get in your paint job is from the beginning stages of painting that's why once you go ahead and put a second and third and fourth you know your chances of getting dirt in that stage are less than at the beginning stages of a job as well as you get the chance to bury the dirt that is in there and again just a Corolla nothing crazy wasn't trying to really go you know hammer time on this one but just something to show you guys man when you want to get something a little cleaner in a not so clean environment you know it can be done there are steps to be taken but you can do it and again keep the vehicle like I'm doing the, the left side the driver's side look at the amount of space there keep that vehicle away from that wall keep it away from whatever you're you're doing and look at the other side there how small that is you know the further you are away from different things whether it's a wall whether it's boxes whatever's in your garage the better the chances of a cleaner paint job so I mean, my booth is big enough to put this in the middle and I'll be fine but for the demonstration of the video. I put it to that side just to show you guys, you know, the closer you are to walls, the more that air pressure blowing around is going to have dirt fly off of those walls and lights or whatever's next to you. All right. All right. What we looking like, what we looking like and keep in mind by no means was I trying to get this sucker flat and slick. Just a little Corolla. Just showing you guys how to get a cleaner, cleaner job. Um, I know I had one little speck up in there. I'm not sure if you can see it. Um, that's about it. This sucker. Yeah, it's about dry now. But yeah, so, you know, that's it. That's it. Goddamn door flew wide open. See how this stuff go around here, man? Just like being out in the damn shed somewhere. But anyway, what trigger? Sign A, we're gonna pull it out in the morning, get some sunlight on it, see what it's looking like, and uh, that's gonna do it. Catch you in the next one. Again, this was something I just went in there and did fairly quick. I wasn't really trying to make it all flat and glass, and you know, that was not the objective in this video. 
for those of you who are gonna be like, yo, it's not even glass, bro. Shut up. <laughs> it's clean though. That's the whole that's the whole point. It's clean. It's clean. For being sprayed in a dungeon, it's clean. Admit it. <laughs> but anyway, man, it's your boy Trigger signing off. Uh, I ask that you would please like, share. I ask that you would subscribe. If you're not subscribed, if you're enjoying the content, please subscribe. And hit that bell thingy. I ask that you would share this video with a friend. And after doing so, if you could please tell his girlfriend. Peace.